Obesity in the United States could be a lot worse than previously thought. Researchers at two New York medical schools have found that the body mass index, BMI, the standard measure of obesity, grossly underestimates the issue. Let's speak to Dr. Erica Braverman, the lead researcher of the study, who joins us now live from New York. I mean, it always struck me as slightly strange that some bodybuilder would have a, be classified as obese when there wasn't a, a, a sort of a millimeter of fat on him. Is it all rubbish? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it's, it's about 50% accurate, and you're absolutely right. The BMI could be 24, and a leptin is low, a blood test for a hormone, and the bodybuilder's body fat is actually 10% or 12% or 14%. And a woman comes in, and her BMI is 24, and her leptin level is elevated, and her body fat's 34%. So the BMI is tragically flawed, and that's why we called it the baloney mass index. Oops. Now, when you add the leptin blood test, you can get near 95% accurate, and when you do a DEXA scan for bone density, you can also measure body fat simultaneous with bone, and then you have 100% accuracy, and the fat is the name of the game. Fat is what produces heart disease. Fat is what produces cancer, stroke, menstrual problems, gallbladder problems, depression, anxiety. So if you don't measure fat correctly, you can't get a fit society. And right now, we're approaching 60% obese in the United States. So we're all a lot fatter than we thought. We are. We have too much fat, and we're not even as overweight as we are fat. And we have to lower that fat, and we have a new breakthrough called blood leptin. Leptin is like cholesterol is for heart disease and sugar is for diabetes. We can lower leptin and lower our fat. We know that tea is better than soft drinks, that fiber is better than white flour, and that fruits are better than sugar, that fish is better than meat, exercise is better than sitting down, sleep is critical, and there are a whole group of hormones, nutrients, and drugs that lower leptin and will give a lasting weight loss. But you have to know what fat is, and BMI is not doing the job, leptin improves it, and DEXA tells you 100% accuracy. Well, I think I'm going to have a very short life, unfortunately. Uh, if you, no, if you... we're going to make you thinner. <laughs> we'll you... make you thinner and live longer. <laughs> if you're lowering the threshold, though, aren't there some dangers associated with that? For example, in terms of people's insurance policies and, and stuff like that, just in terms of litigation. If you're classifying more people as obese than hitherto they were. Uh, between 30 and 60, people lose their productivity because of fat and they also have to retire early. We think that if we fix the fat problem between 30 and 60, workers will be able to work until they're 80, that people will be able to have longer lifespans with better quality and function, and that the United States will be able to raise the uh, Medicare uh, benefits from 65 what is your, to 80. And just briefly, how do you stack up? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm, about, I'm one of those guys that it's like 23, 24 BMI with about 14% body fat. So I'm the, that male. I'm not uh, you know, a freak, but I'm certainly <laughs> thin and fit. All right, it's very good. And my BMI is completely useless. Okay. BMI right. is totally uh, useless. I'll bear that in mind, but the next time I'm given one. Dr. Eric Braveman, thanks very much indeed for speaking to me.